Hey guys, KSN at the Shelter Institute, here to talk to you about a, our typical attachment detail of the timber frame to the foundation. So we've got here a full model, more or less, of what that looks like. The only thing that's missing is the concrete foundation. So we're going to start from the, from the bottom up. If we assume that this surface here is the foundation running this way, this is our favorite sill seal made by Protecto Wrap. Why is it our favorite? Well, it's a particularly thick sill seal, so it takes up big irregularities in the top of the wall, but it also has a self-adhesive on one side that allows us to bond it either to the top of the wall or the underside of the sill plate. This is our favorite sill plate. It's the PSL Plus made by Weyerhaeuser. It is a parallel strand lumber timber that is pressure treated and it's made by grinding up southern yellow pine into strands and then pressure treating it and then drying it and gluing it back together. So it's a very stable product when we get it and the pressure treating is continuous throughout. So we don't have to worry about cutting it on site. We can buy this in very long lengths. It's three and a half inches thick and it comes in varying widths. So if we have a very thick panel on the outside of the building we might end up going with a slightly wider piece but it's available up to 16 inches wide so it gives us plenty of width regardless all right on top of that is our eye joist floor system despite the fact that we're building a timber frame with green wood we always like to start with a very stable dry first floor platform the engineered eye joists do that for us this is their proprietary rim board on the outside of the sill plate, we've got a piece of framing lumber that is mechanically fastened and glued to the sill plate. This is an important connection between the structural insulated panel and the sill plate. The sill plate, of course, is bolted to the foundation using the Titan HD fasteners that we install after the pour. So we have a continuous load path from the sip to the shoe to the sill plate to the foundation. We carry all of this down into the ground so that the wind, when the wind blows, the building can't move. All right, so if you look sideways at the shoe, you can see the foam is held back at the bottom of the sip so that the skin fits over both sides of the shoe. Inboard of the sip is the type MR gypsum that we like to use and a reminder that we install that gypsum independent of the panel right on to the timber frame. So once the timber frame is up, we start hanging sheets of gypsum. And then of course on the inside, uh, you have the timber. And there are a number of different ways to handle getting the load of the timber down to the platform. We like to build a continuous first floor platform and set the timber frame completely on top of that. That allows us to move the posts around a little bit while we're building the timber frame, which sometimes helps setting the rafter plates. You could also cut through the floor system and have this post go down through. That's not our preferred method. We like to have it just sitting up on top of the first floor platform. We find that it makes construction a little simpler. We still need to transfer the gravity load of the post through the sheathing and down to the foundation. We do that with a solid pack out. So if you look inside there, you can see that we've got um, solid blocking installed from the underside of the sheathing down to the sill plate. The eye joist manufacturer likes to see that blocking a sixteenth of an inch taller than the actual eye joist just to make sure that the weight of the post isn't ever able to crush the web of the eye joist. The amount of blocking that you need to install there might vary from one job to the next. If it's a single story timber frame, you just have to worry about the roof load. If it's a two story timber frame, then you have a floor load and a roof load and so on. So the amount of blocking might vary from job to job. If we're using solid sawn blocking, we want to make sure that it's the grain of that blocking is oriented vertically so that it's parallel to the post. It's much less likely to crush or to shrink than um, when it's oriented that way. Last detail is the attachment of the sip to the timber frame and that's what actually keeps the timber frame in place. So as I'm spinning it, just notice on the end here, you can see the squeeze out of the mastic. That is a urethane mastic that bonds the shoe to the sill plate to make sure that we don't ever get separation between the sip and the sill plate. And as I continue to spin around, you can see now we've got proprietary R-control screws that run through the SIP and they go into the box, both the first floor platform, and they also go into the post ab above. So it's these screws that actually keep the post down on the platform when the wind blows. And the load path is through the shoe, into the sill plate, and into the foundation. So just to wrap up, reiterate how all of this is attached. We do use mechanical fasteners to attach the SIP to the timber frame and from the SIP into the first floor platform. The eye joists are actually also screwed into the sill plate. 
The shoe is a critical part of the load transfer from the sip into the foundation. So this shoe is mechanically fastened uh, down into the sill plate, but it's also glued to the sill plate. The sill plate itself is mechanically fastened to the concrete wall using our preferred Titan HD fastener that we can install after the wall is poured to make sure that we don't end up with J-bolts in our way and to make sure that we end up with enough anchors to the foundation. And then the final attachment is from the sip into the shoe. Once again, we just nail that every six inches all the way around the perimeter of the building. This is not a structural detail, but an air sealing detail. One of the last things we do before we leave the job site is drill through this OSB into this minor void on top of the shoe and fill that with expanding foam to make sure that no air is leaking into the building down here at the uh, vulnerable sill plate. So this is our preferred way to anchor the timber frame down to the foundation when it works because we're installing all of this stuff anyway. We have a timber frame, we're installing SIP, so when we can use the SIP uh, as the hold down, that works well. It's a very efficient way to get the project done. Occasionally we'll build in a high seismic zone or a high wind region and this isn't quite enough so we have to install post bases that actually anchor the post directly to the concrete or if we're building in a situation where we don't have a first floor platform, then we will typically use a post base that directly connects the post to the slab.